I am seeing way more histamine reactions and histamine sensitivities in clinical practice than I ever have before. Uh, I'm talking the past four or five years, they are skyrocketing. And I want to actually talk about a very underlooked way to support histamine and histamine hypersensitivity in the, in the body. And that involves uh, the concept of dehydration. Now, there is one particular doctor who I've learned a ton about this particular lens of hydration from, and his name is Dr. Bob Mongolich. Dr. Bob Mongolich has written so many books. I mean, I've got like three or four on my floor right now. Here's one um, in particular, and this is basically water and water and salt, your healers from within. What we realize is that um, he also wrote Your Body's Many Cries for Water, some amazing books. Uh, Dr. Bob Mongolich was an Iranian physician during the time when the Iranian revolution was going on, and he was actually imprisoned. Um, but because he was a physician imprisoned, the prison guards bought sick, brought sick prisoners to him uh, to, to help, that help him tend to them. Now, he did not have any of his uh, typical doctor tools available to him in that type of a setting. Instead, all he had access to was water. And what he started to do, uh, especially when, you know, when these prisoners would come to him writhing in things like pain from things like ulcers or other chronic pain conditions, he would give them two to three glasses of water to drink. And he noticed quite surprisingly that their pain symptoms subsided. And he noticed these observations with giving water for asthma attacks and panic attacks and angina and you name it, so many different things where he was like, wait a second, what's going on here? So even though he was uh, set to be released at a certain date, he actually asked the prison to stay in there longer so he could complete this observation experiment. And, and it was a, it was a very interesting setting, right? Because he was really in a perfect laboratory setting, if you will, like a real life laboratory setting to make some very interesting observations regarding water consumption. And so first and foremost, I want to kind of lay out why you know, what, what he said was what, what his bottom line here was that chronic but unintentional dehydration or persistent unintentional dehydration was at the root cause of so many of the symptoms we're seeing these days from pain to allergies to inflammation, including what we see with autoimmune diseases. And um, he actually had the perfect place to observe what's going on. So what would be happening? What would happen typically in a prison system? Well, first and foremost, in a prison, that would be prison. That would be considered a very high stress environment, in my opinion, to be living in. And we know that stress downregulates the ability of the mitochondria to function efficiently. And remember, one of the main things that the mitochondria make is water. So mitochondria, if they're unable to make that intracellular water, we can easily become chronically unintentionally dehydrated. In conjunction with that, it's, a, it's like it's entirely possible that these prisoners did not have access to uh, regular water sources and instead had to um, only, only consume water at certain times of the day so they couldn't respond to their sensations of thirst. So there could have been a, a twofold factor in terms of why they were found to be persistently but unintentionally dehydrated, both through the lens of stress impairing mitochondrial function, along with potentially an inability to hydrate the body when it was being asked. And so what Dr. about Mandelage then, once he was released from prison and had completed those observational studies, he wanted to understand the biochemical pathway of what would be happening here. And what he found was that in times where there was this chronic unintentional dehydration, that um, histamine was released. And histamine was released not as a not in response to like an environmental allergen, like we would sometimes think of it these days, and like a pollen or maybe something that would be inflammatory to the gut. But instead, he found that histamine was released by the immune cells as a uh, what he called a drought management system, meaning when the body sensed that it was low in water, it would turn on or, or release histamine uh, as a means of actually preventing water or isolating water or you got like essentially keeping water where it's essential. And one of the things that what, what one of the ways that this was expressed or what he found was that once the blood volume becomes mildly dehydrated, histamine turns on. When histamine turns on in this capacity, it prevents fluid or it, it, it drastically lowers the ability to uh, basically at the capillaries, allow water from the blood plasma to leave the capillaries and go into the interstitial fluid space because we wouldn't want to lower blood 
hydration levels uh, because that could be that could be life threatening, right? And so instead, we would keep the blood in, or we keep the hydration in the blood. But in the meantime, in this interstitial space between the capillary and the cell, we could have a massive dehydration signal. And uh, when we have this dehydration signal turning on, this chronic histamine release, this actually he found uh, set off a vicious pathway. And the vicious pathway looked something like this, right? We get a signal that the body is dehydrated vasopressin could be released or we could uh or we could um get another there's a couple of other pathways like via the red red and angiotensin system that this could be signaled to the body so all of a sudden you have histamine being released when you have this chronic histamine being released that becomes a stress signal as well so you get this release of cort uh, corticotropin releasing factor corticotropin releasing factor then uh when it when it's constitutionally activated it uh turns on a, a particular cytokine pathway called interleukin one and I'm not going to go into all the details here, um, the nitty gritty, de de nitty gritty details here. I talk about this extensively in the hydration course for practitioners. But needless to say, when you have this chronic stimulation of these inflammatory cytokines, he ultimately found out that different proteases are released. And we know that proteases from these immune cells, proteases get released. And what these proteases do is they break down protein. They're designed, they're designed to essentially recycle proteins. Uh, and so it turns out in this state of chronic unintentional dehydration, you have an elevation of proteases. So what happens in the cellular environment when you've got proteases there? Well, they're dissolving parts of the cell. And uh, so that that's actually led to things like DNA and RNA frag fragmentation, and uh, also then draws the attention of the immune system to clear it. So you have an increase of uh, the, the, this tissue fragmentation that draws the immune system to say, oh, oh, we have to repair this tissue that's being fragmented. And then all of a sudden you get um, an increase in inflammatory cytokines like OTNF-alpha, oh, right? And other interleukin-6 and other cytokines that are associated with autoimmune diseases. So he literally has seen cases of of lupus, um, of type one diabetes, and several other autoimmune conditions completely heal from appropriate hydration strategies. From my lens, appropriate hydration is making sure the mitochondria are making adequate water, are consuming good quality water, and also, uh, if a client needs it, allowing them to have uh, access to, you know, tell, asking them to get access to quinton isotonic minerals. Those quinton isotonic minerals mimic the fluid content and the mineral content of the blood. So it's a rapid way to rehydrate the blood so that you can lower that, that signal that the blood volume has decreased and you can downregulate histamine and all of these cytokine pathways. And I'm a, I was the prime example of this, right, actually, because I, I don't have any allergies. I, I don't experience allergies or, or sensitivities or anything like that. I used to, you know, but I got rid of those. I haven't experienced anything like that for a long, long time. And I had the privilege of flying to Tracy Dews's Hydrate Summit in San Diego. So uh, but that, I basically had, it was a 48 hour turnover, right? We dropped the kids off. My husband and I dropped the kids off where they were staying. We hopped on a flight. We flew two flights to San Diego, stayed there two flights back. And while I, you, while I try to stay as hydrated as possible in a situation like that, as we all probably know, flying is massively, massively dehydrating. And when I came back, um, in spite of the fact that we were already high pollen in our area and I didn't have any symptoms, when I came back, I started to experience the symptoms of allergies. I started to have itchy nose, itchy eyes, and I was sneezing all the time. And so I thought to myself, well, here's the prime time for me to uh, yeah, put my money where my mouth is and test my own um, you know, recommendations for this. And so I got a pack of Quinton Isotonic and I started to consume on an empty stomach three to four ampules a day. And over the course of three to four days, my symptoms completely disappeared. Now, I was also consuming good quality water, which I talk about in my courses as well. But that alone, uh, in spite of the fact that the pollen was continuing to increase, massive amounts of pollen still that way you can see on the hood of the car and stuff like that. Um, and so yet the pollen, the, the environmental trigger was definitely still there. However, my response to it completely gone and it stayed gone. Um, and so I highly, highly encourage those of you who are practitioners dealing with high histamine loads with your clients to look into this concept of how dehydration can contribute to a histamine overburden in the body. And then how simple hydration strategies, both from the lens of mitochondrial water, the water we drink, and quinton isotonic can come into play to support your clients to lower their, their total histamine burden.